This is syndaptis, syndapsis, syn, syndapsis, syndapsis. This is syn, syn. Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel, The Organized Soprano. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and singer here in the Boston area, and I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a different video. I have been getting some messages on my social media about my houseplants. I've been getting Instagram DMs, stuff on Twitter DMs, uh, Facebook DMs, and uh, you guys are really interested in what's going on with my houseplant obsession. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today, give a little bit of a plant tour, and I'll give you tips about storing houseplant supplies, and also give some tips for those of you who think you have black thumbs, but I guarantee you, you can definitely have a plant thrive under your care. You just need a little bit of knowledge. Um, so let's get started. If you're interested in that, keep watching. So my interest in uh, everything horticultural is not actually random. I used to plant things outside. I used to be much more of an outside gardener. Um, I grew a whole bunch of mini vegetables as like an urban gardening project. I did fire scapes, roofs, all kinds of things because I didn't really have any outdoor garden space and I found that to be especially satisfying and stress relieving. Along with having an organized space, one of the biggest things you can do for yourself and do for your space and do for your stress levels is enrich your home in ways that will make it more comfortable to be there and actually a little bit healthier 2019 has been a little bit of a stressful year for me and my doctor recommended you know exercise eating healthy and also some meditation so I am not the type of person who likes to sit still for very long I'm a very much of a busybody you guys know that I found that the sitting quiet meditation did work for me it did bring my stress levels down but I love to be active I love to be up and doing things and I found that taking care of plants and my morning meditation of going around and inspecting all of them, doing the watering and making, pulling off any dead leaves, you know, treating them for any diseases or anything like that has been a moving meditation for me. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes in the morning. I have over, I think 25 plants. So the more plants you have, the longer this will take. But I have found that that's a very meditative activity for me. So uh, if you're a busybody like me and you like to do stuff and not sit and meditate, this might be a good choice for you. Along with being absolutely beautiful and fulfilling to take care of, they actually have a lot of health benefits as well. Uh, there is some claim that they clean the air in the apartment. I'm not really sure if that's true. I think you'd have to have a lot more plants in order for it to purify the air. But I do feel that there is a different energy in the house when it's full of house plants. If you live in a small space and you're not really sure what kind of plants are gonna be good for your space because you're afraid of them getting big, you can definitely buy smaller plants that will pretty much stay small. Or if you have like one really large corner that's bright, you can actually get a large plant and that will be you know, just enough to add to your space. The light keeps going in and out because the sun keeps going behind clouds and stuff, it's really fun. In my apartment, since it's between two other apartments, I have windows only on one side of the apartment and I get, it's a south facing window, but I find that this room in the living room gets pretty much medium to bright indirect light most of the day. And it doesn't really get sunshine really coming too much into the room. There is a lot of sunshine in the windowsill and I put my succulents who love that there. Uh, I will actually move them from this area to the windowsill during the day and I'll move them away at night. But the rest of this room does get bright or medium to indirect light. The further away that you put your plants from the window, the less light it's going to get. So um, the ones that are least tolerant of the super bright light are farther away from the window. If you're really not sure and you have no idea what like bright light means, aside from medium light, low light, what's it all about, there is an app that you can get definitely on the uh, iPhone app store. I don't know if it's available on Android, but I will let you know on in an annotation on the video. It's called Plant Light and it's amazing. All you have to do is open it and place it directly at the light source and it'll tell you exactly how much light you are getting in your home. So I'll turn it towards you and you can see it says, <laughs> It says very low because I'm pointing it towards there, there, but if I turn it around, you can't see it. It'll say medium, uh, almost bright. So uh, this is a really handy tool if you really can't judge and you're not sure. Uh, it costs 99 cents. It's really cheap one-time purchase, so I definitely recommend that if you're not good at judging the light situation. 
And without further ado, let's get to the plant tour. I installed an alpha shelving system for my plants because I needed more space, more surface to put them before they were all on this console kind of, or a buffet kind of crowded and they really weren't getting the right, like, they were just really crowded. So, and I kind of put them over there as well, but it's not as bright over there on the other side of the room as it is over here. So I moved all of my plants over here so they could get nice, bright to medium light, <laughs> indirect light. So uh, I'm gonna start over here with this little guy. This one is Senecio radicans, or some people call it string of bananas because the little leaves on this plant look like bananas. This is a succulent and it does not require a bunch of light though and it can thrive in medium light it was actually a lot shorter when i got it and it's grown a lot since then it's just in a little cash po it's actually a four inch pot super tiny but it's been really happy since i brought it home and i've only watered it maybe twice uh, but it thrives under this sort of medium light so i have been really loving and enjoying this they make different, cult oh my gosh, there's a little leaf that needs to go there. There's a different cultivars of this. There's a string of dolphins that's really cute, string of pearls and string of tears, I think they're called. So there's different sort of variations of this lovely plant and, but string of bananas is the one I like the most. Next we have Schifflera elegantissima, or this is also called Gold Coast False Aralia, I think it's called, I think it was, reclassified at some point. So this, I think right now is a Schifflera, but I think it was something else earlier. I saw this plant at Home Depot and I could not leave it. It was just so adorable. The leaves have a little gold yellow variation on them and it's just so cute. This, uh, this plant does not require very much care or special needs at all. All I have to do is water it every now and again. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll see this. Oh, actually, I think there is a mealybug on there. So we'll talk a little bit about pests later. So I see there's definitely a mealybug on there. I only see one so far, so we will take it off with some of the supplies together. Wow, where did you come from? So I'm gonna put this in the plant hospital. If you see a pest on your plant, do not panic. You can definitely save it and you can definitely help it. You just need to like isolate it to the plant hospital and we will take off the mealybug and uh, discuss what to do. Great. The next plant is Dracaena Compacta Janet Craig. Now this is just a super cute plant. I saw it at Home Depot and I was like, I need that because it's adorable. It doesn't require very much care at all. It just kind of sits there and it's cute, um, but I, just love it. It would be super cute in a pineapple cash po, but we'll we'll decide on that a little later. Right now it's just in this red pot and I love it, but uh, this is Dracaena Compacta Janet Craig. I don't know who Janet Craig is, but um, she's a cute plant. So this guy is Sansevieria of some sort. I got, I got him at um, Marshall's actually. It was in the checkout line and I was like, wait, that's a real plant. Um, if you like cannot take care of plants at all and you just kill everything, this is the plant to get. There's a bunch of different kinds of Sansevieria. They're also called snake plants and they don't need much attention at all. You can like walk away from it, leave it in a dark area, not a super dark area, but like you can leave it in a low light area and it'll do fine. So if you often kill plants and you're like, I don't know what to do, Sansevieria, you can't kill this. I mean, I guess you can, but you'd have to try really hard. This is my curly spider plant. I forgot the actual scientific name for it, um, but it does start with C and it's just two C names. I will put it on the screen. I'll put everything on the screen. This is the snake plant that your mom and dad had in the 70s and 80s and uh, had babies and everything. It's got a little baby right there, but this is a variety that has curly leaves, which I have curly hair, so I can relate to her and I just love it. It's in a tiny four inch pot. This is cute spider, spider plant. Really cute. Behind my spider plant is a little bit of um, bamboo, <laughs> lucky bamboo. It was actually a gift from the developer to everyone who bought a condo in this building. So uh, that's been there for a little while. It's not super special. I have learned that that plant does not like tap water and it needs to be in distilled water. 
So it's got some brown leaves on it. So, but we are, we're hopefully gonna get her not browned and thriving soon. Next is my really sad um, asparagus fern. <laughs> I don't know if this plant is gonna make it and everybody, this goes to show you that everybody makes mistakes, even the most seasoned houseplant person or houseplant parent will make mistakes. This plant did have some scale insects on it and I treated it uh, with neem oil and I washed it off of course, but it did not like it. Um, and has a lot of yellowing and browning of the leaves. In case you're wondering, this is not actually a fern. It's really cute, I hope it will recover, but um, it definitely has some issues right now. <laughs> Next is the famous, most Instagrammable plant of all time. This is Monstera Deliciosa. This is probably the most popular plant right now on social media um, because it's got these beautiful, attractive, fenestrated, leaves when the plant matures. You can see it's got little splits in it. So this plant is super popular. It's very easy to care for. It needs like medium to bright light. Don't put it in direct sunlight because you will definitely burn the leaves. Um, and it will tolerate you forgetting to water it for a few days. Um, if you do, if you do, the leaves will kind of droop a little bit and be sad, but then water it, it'll prick it right back up. This plant does get big. <laughs> so um, this is more of a juvenile sized plant, but um, these things do get really huge. So I don't know how long this is going to be a shelf plant, but we're going to, we're going to love its little small size for now. Down here, we've got watermelon peperomia. And as you can see, the leaves on this plant look like watermelons. And I just think are the cutest. This plant is super easy to care for. It's got amazingly gorgeous red stems. So if you're looking for an adorable plant that is like high on the cute scale, watermelon peperomia. Any of the peperomias are super easy to care for, but I do think this one is the cutest. <laughs> I'm not gonna move this guy, but I will put some B-roll footage in so you guys can see. This is Philodendron burly marks. And I saw this in one of those like fancy plant stores. It was a really like, like bougie plant store, but I couldn't leave it behind. I love philodendrons because of the shapes of the leaves, but um, this is magnificent and it's so easy. It doesn't like you can just leave it. It doesn't require high humidity or anything like that. It's very tolerant if you forget to water it. It's beautiful. So if you want to appear that you are like a fancy, plant lady and that your space is so fancy, philodendron burl marks. They're not, I don't think they're super, I don't think a lot of people have these um, philodendrons. They must have the, the heart shaped philodendrons. So if you're looking for something a little different, burly marks. Is it burly marks or burl marks? I don't know. This is Fetonia. She is the best plant for an opera singer because it is one of the most dramatic plants in the world. If this plant needs water, like even a little bit, it will appear that it is dead, dying, done, expired. It will like look completely wilted, pathetic. Like you, if you look at it, you, it's, it's like, oh, I'm dying. You give it water and then it's, fi it's fine. <laughs> so um, if, you're, if, you, if that seems like the kind of fun plant for you, <laughs> then you can get a Fetonia. Look at how beautiful the foliage is, it's got these amazing white veins going through it. Uh, this is also called nerve nerve plant, um, and she is she's just fabulous. This is Pilea peperomioides, and it's also called the Chinese money plant or the friendship plant because this plant loves to clone itself. It's like always afraid it's gonna die or something, <laughs> so it's like, oh, I gotta shoot up a clone. Um, so the thing, that's why it's called the friendship plant. So if it, if you, you can actually separate the little babies from the mother plant and give it to a friend uh, and they'll make their own uh, money plant. But it's an adorable plant. The, the leaves almost look like, you know, silver dollars. They're so cute. This plant was really hard to get probably a year ago. Um, but is really popular right now. So I got it at my local nursery for 10 bucks. So if you can find this in a nursery and you really want it, grab it. It's super easy to care for and it's adorable. I'm now looking at all of them, making sure they don't have mealybugs. Who did the mealybugs? Where did the mealybugs come from? This is Syndapsis pictus. I really struggle to say that name. Syndapsis, Syndapsis, Syndapsis. 
struggle is real. Anyway, it's also called Satin Pothos. Um, it has a variegation on the leaves that is silvery in color and in quality. So I don't know if you can actually see, but it does have a very shiny, almost glittery quality about the leaves and which makes it super special and a little bit magical. I really like this plant because it just is very chill. Like it's, it's almost as chill as the Janet Craig. <laughs> like you can just leave it and forget about it. It's fine. Um, but I'm excited for this to get bigger. It does have, um, it is like a vining plant. Like it's, uh, it lives on other things that climbs. So that's why it's got all these aerial roots. It's going to reach out and grab something. But um, I just can't wait till it just trails. I like that trailing quality. Like it's going to go. Ooh. Here is a variegated ivy. It is absolutely stunning. I love this house plant so much. She is doing really well, as you can see. However, um, this is a plant I worry about because these get spider mites. This did have spider mites at one point and I, um, I washed them off and uh, I haven't seen one since, but they, um, they're just prone to spider mites. But as long as you keep them humid and you mist their, these are, this is one of the plants that likes, likes their leaves misted, <laughs> um, they, it'll be fine. But I do worry about, this is like my problem child. I worry about her. I, and I very closely inspect this one in the mornings, which um, makes me feel like I should inspect them all as carefully. <laughs> Down at the bottom here, we have another sort of problem child. Uh, this is a uh, Hypoestes uh, something. Uh, it's also called polka dot plant or freckle face. And that is because it has super cute dots and freckles on its foliage. They can be different colors. This one is pink. Um, this one, I'm probably going to prune a little bit because it's getting really leggy and weird. I, this, of all the plants, really, honestly, this one is the most problematic. I don't know what she needs. Um, I've been trying to take care of her and give her what she needs. I think I'm just going to prune it back a lot and see what happens. Um, I know that you're supposed to pinch the tops to make it a little bushier. Um, these nodes are really far apart from one another, so I'm thinking... Um, there's something wrong there. <laughs> Maybe it needs a little more light, so we'll see what I can do for it. But uh, it's still really cute. Otherwise, it's um, it's cute. I do have a few plants that are a little more high maintenance, little divas, <sighs> and they are living in this humidified area because they need more humidity. So <laughs> they're all kind of grouped together as well, and that is all of my plants that are in the Martissier family. If you're looking to step up to like a next level plant, if you're like good at taking care of the easy ones and you want to like bump it up, the any of the Calathea family is probably will test you a little bit because they need a lot of special things. They don't like tap water, uh, so I use distilled water to water them and they don't like low humidity. But the most forgiving of these, this family probably is the prayer plant. Uh, I guess this is called red maranta. I think that's what she officially called. And the leaves of these plants move a lot. And that is why I love them, even though they're a little high maintenance. Um, during the day, as you can see, it folds, they fold way down like that. Um, and at night, they go like that. <laughs> they rise up. I'll put some pictures of like the plants during the day as opposed to at night. It's really cool and during the day you can actually see that they do move their leaves like all day. Like you'll look at it one minute and then you'll like come back a few hours and it's like, did that plant move? So they are, um, I guess that's called, they're being heliotropic. They are heliotropic. So if that is something that sounds cool to you, then um, prayer plants are really cool. They do require a lot of humidity or else they will get the brown tips on the leaves. These, these leaves look pretty good. I rescued this from a grocery store that was on the floor and it was looking very sad. Um, but I took her home. I fertilized it a little bit. I let it chill and we've got all kinds of new leaf growth. We've got like new leaf popping out right there and new leaf popping out. I think there's like, oh, underneath. Right there, right there. Oh no. <laughs> so 
somebody needed to make his presence known. If you guys haven't seen my channel before, this is Clover. Of course, I have a dog with a plant name. <laughs> but um, he just wanted to let you know that he was here. And uh, yeah, Clover. There it is. This is Calathea roseopicta medallion, I believe. And it does, they look really sad during the day. They look like they're drooping, but they're not. She's just pointing her leaves at the light source. And this little thing at the top is actually a new leaf. So you can see, like, it looks like a straw. You could just suck up something. Um, but the leaves are really beautiful. This is a small plant and uh, it does fold up its leaves really early actually. It goes to bed as early as I do and I love it. This planter is one of my favorites. It's from Anthropology, and it was a collaboration with a Croatian artist and it's just darling and I love it. This is Calathea freddy and it's a cute plant. I, res I feel like I rescued this from the bougie plant store. I they weren't taking super good care of it. It had it, it, it looks like it's been left in the bright light and it look at the leaves there, they look a little faded. So some of these in front look really, uh, like they've lost some of their color. And normal, normally their leaves are supposed to look like this really stripey, really candy-like green. Um, these plants have green bottoms. Uh, a lot of the other Calatheas have red bottoms. So this is kind of unusual that way, but ever since I brought it home, it's been really happy and it's a super cute, Calathea. One of the more tolerant Calathea is the rattlesnake Calathea, or like this, I think this is called Calathea lancifolia. And it, again, looks really sad, but this, the leaves in this stand completely straight up at night and it's really spectacular. I've got some new leaves coming up there. This plant, if you're looking to get into Calatheas, is a little bit more forgiving than um, Medallion or Freddy. Um, it does have a little bit of the brown crispies, but I feel like that's from the nursery. So I'm gonna bring this a little closer so you can see it. Really cute plant. So I do run a humidifier next to these plants because they just like a more humid environment. So I'm gonna give them what they want. They, I mean, the divas, get what they need, they get what they need. I do have a few succulents, nothing really spectacular, just a moon cactus, which is actually a two plants grafted together. They don't live very long because I guess the two plants have different needs, so but my husband bought me that and it's really cute. I have a little jade plant in like a teacup planter, a little Haworthia in the cutest little turtle planter, and this is a disaster that is growing, so I don't, not really sure what happened to this guy. Uh, he was in one of those like mix, mix planters. So he's, uh, he's special. I have some things propagating up here. Uh, we'll see how well those do. And those are some really old calla lilies that my husband brought me. That I think they've actually been around for months. So they are kind of spent, but they're looking pretty good. And down in the window here, I do have some succulents that love it. There's an aloe vera that loves the sunlight and an echeveria that's a little stretched out, but we don't care. She looks good anyway. She's living her best life. Over here in this dark corner, I have a ZZ plant. And if you are new to houseplants, you can't kill this, okay? This plant, <laughs> this plant is a warrior. It can survive any light condition. Um, and if you go for four months without watering this, it will be fine. <laughs> So if you really can't keep any plant alive and you want something to green up your space, this is the perfect plant. It has this beautiful waxy leaves and they're, they are, when they, you see the waxy leaves, it means it can usually hold in more of its water. So it also has tuberous um, roots. So there was a little tuber that had been on top of the soil when I brought it home. So I planted it in its own little pot. Here it is. Tell me that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. So hopefully he'll grow up big and be his own amazing big ZZ plant. And I have one plant in my bedroom. This is Anthurium uh, something, <laughs> but it's commonly known as flamingo flower and or flamingo lily. And as you can see, it has five blooms on it. Uh, the two blooms on the top are pink, the more mature. This one is the, the oldest. It's really pretty. They don't smell or anything, but they're just attractive. I really like this plant because of the leaves more. I'm more of a leaf kind of girl. So this leaf is absolutely stunning and she is happy in here. She also likes high humidity. So you've got the diffuser running without any oil, but um, she is a happy camper. So because I have uh, quite the collection of houseplants, I need a place to store a lot of the supplies, but I don't have a lot of space. So I've just given 
this one cabinet <laughs> the job of storing all of my plant things. We'll show you what's inside. So this is the inside of my plant storage cabinet and as you can see it's got some supplies on top and on the bottom and I've also used the door. So starting over here is I've got a moisture meter. It also measures light and pH but I mostly use it for moisture to see whether or not I need to water my plants and if you are uh, very happy with your trigger finger with the watering can get this. I, these are cheap. These are like 10 bucks um, and it will stop you from overwatering your plants, which is the biggest cause of plant death, I believe. <laughs> so, um, and also I have some pruning shears and a magnifying glass, which we're going to need in a second. So I just have those in a command hook. This is actually a command hook that's used for holding bottles for cleaning fluids and stuff like that, but I've repurposed them for this cabinet and I really am happy. So inside I've got some watering tools. I've got my watering can. I also have a watering can up there. This is the watering can I like to leave out because it's so cute. I actually got it from Target. And I have a mister as well because some of these plants love their leaves to be missed, uh, in specifically the Calathea guys. And also the ivy loves her leaves misted as well. But down here I just have some extra pots. Um, I've got some bamboo sticks for aerating soil. If it seems to be compacted, I just stick that in the soil and it breaks up some of that compactness so that the roots can get some air. And we've also got a little like plant hospital fertilization station here. Inside of this, I just have some food, which I haven't used. I actually like to use this um, Osmocote food because you just sprinkle it on the soil and then you stick them inside and then you water it. It's much easier. I feel like it's a little gentler on the plants too. Some of this stuff can burn roots. So I get really, I don't use this a lot. Um, but I, I prefer to use this. Anyway, I've got some Q-tips here for taking off mealy bugs and stuff. I've also got some alcohol for taking off mealy bugs and stuff. And I have what it, I refer to as leaf wash. I don't buy uh, like leaf shine products. I feel like they can be a little harmful to your plant. So what's in this little spray bottle, that's what it is, is just some water and a little bit of neutral pH soap. I use dish soap and it gets off water spots and stuff off of the plant leaves just fine. Uh, I would not towards you, point you towards the leaf shine stuff. Um, this is just some flower food and I've got some rooting hormone in there as well. So this is my little like plant care station, which I think is great because I can just take this over to a plant if I have a problem, um, which I'm going to do right now. Down at the bottom, instead of having different soils for different kinds of plants, because succulents need different soil than, you know, say calatheas, um, because the succulents need a lot more aeration and drainage in their soil, um, instead of having different soils, I just have, well, I have this potting soil, but I have one kind of potting soil, and then I'll make amendments for the plant. Like, if the plant needs more aeration, I have perlite, and I'll put that, I'll add that to the potting soil. And I also have behind here, this is the neem oil that is used to control insects, um, sand down here. And I will just mix my own potting soil depending on the plant, and that saves me from having to store a bunch of different potting soil. Um, it's also vermiculite down here. This causes um, plants to rain, the soil to maintain a little more moisture because it actually sucks up some of the moisture. It's really weird. <laughs> Um, but it's cool. And here, the last thing I have in here is a potting mat. And this is for people who live in small spaces and don't have room for a potting table. So here's the potting mat all assembled. And what's great about this mat is it's about three feet square. If you are potting stuff up and you're getting dirt all over the floor, this will solve all your problems. <laughs> it has um, braid size now because it has a little um, snap there that you can help seal it in so when you pot up your plants or you play around with your potting soil <laughs> you cannot make a huge mess you can just uh you know put it back in the potting mix when you're done and uh, it folds up and gets really small when you're not using it it's really fantastic i love it i wasn't sure whether or not i was recording but i did get the mealy bug off the plant so i'm sad that i didn't get to <laughs> film that, but he is now um, free of me any mealybugs I can see, and uh, I don't see that there's one left on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this plant down with some water with a really, really tough spray. Um, if you get bugs on your plants, do not panic. It's definitely um, something that is manageable. For now, I'm gonna keep it in uh, isolation. And if you're wondering, <laughs> this little cash came from Marshall's, 
and it had a fake plant in it and I took it out and put a real plant in because how much cuter is the real plant? <laughs> like honestly. Um, but let me run this through a quick uh, bath with a hose in my sink and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll put him in the hospital, plant hospital. Sorry guy, sorry. So I hope this video, it's inspired you to go out and get your first green leafy pet. You can definitely take care of a plant. You just need to know what the plant needs. And uh, if all of us fails, just get a ZZ plant, honestly. <laughs> all right, you guys, I hope you're having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Syndaps, syndapsis, syndapsis. This is syndapsis, syndapsis. This is sim, sim. This is syndapsis, 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 sim, syndapsis. Really?